Modeka Award Roundtable is brought to you by the Modeka Award, fostering a culture of excellence. Digital is no longer just part of the economy, it is the economy. It has presented limitless opportunities for some and disruption for others. And the question that we need to ask ourselves is what is Malaysia's future in this digital economy? Now I'd like to kickstart this discussion by asking if you think that we are digital ready because technology has removed traditional rules, traditional barriers and thus intensifying competition. And the fact is, we are now truly competing in the global stage. Now, I'd like to start with Karamjit. Are we embracing digital fast enough? Malaysia? Fast enough? No, we're not. Uh, but we are embracing digital. There are different speeds for different companies and different organizations. But we are embracing digital because it's all around us. Right? Like you said, digital is already here. Mm -hmm. you know, and soon, the word digital will disappear because it's just going to be the economy. You know, nobody ever spoke about you know, the, uh, the power economy or the coal economy, right? But to answer your question, we're not moving fast enough, and that's a concern because we're going to be winners, right? In this space, I think you're going to be in the top 20 countries in the, in the world, you know, as digital nations, then you're going to enjoy the benefits. Perhaps, Dr. Ko, uh, what are your thoughts about embracing digitization, especially in the academic sector? In order to embrace di digitization, uh, we need to look at it from two perspectives, which is making sure that our society is uh, ready in terms of knowledge and habits. So what we're doing today is we are putting a lot of focus on knowledge itself, making sure they, they know about, uh, for example, IoT, Internet of Things, making sure they know about what, what the topics in Industry 4.0. But the question that we really need to think about is whether we are instilling the right habits, the right thinking skills, we are, we are giving them uh, critical thinking skills, so, or being innovative enough so that they have the right habits to uh, embrace this digital economy as it comes along. So does this difficulty lie that lies in uh, changing the mindset, the culture, or is it the uh, lack of infrastructure for now? I think the government has done tremendous work, even in the private sector for Telecom Malaysia, for example, in the infrastructure side. But I think if you look at digital per se, uh, we look at it in four ways. Huh? Uh, adoption for digital in terms of the strategy planning, uh, when you also make the product, when you sell the product and then when you manage the product. Uh, most Malaysian companies is focusing on the selling process of digital. But the true culture really resides at the back. So do you really manage your, you know, your, your company via digital? Do you think digital, do you produce digitally? And if you think about uh, when we looked at you know, 28 Malaysian companies across 117 uh, uh, KPIs on digital, including things like does your CEO appear on LinkedIn or social media, for example, we found that uh, in the score one to, f one to four, we found that US, for example, the, the United States uh, score is 2.5, Malaysia is at 1.7. So that's the gap, and that's real, and we know where the gaps are. It's culture primarily. Uh, I don't think it's infrastructure. It's how we think and how we execute. Right. I would like to get to Azrina. You do go on the ground. You meet a lot of uh, people who are embracing technology. And what are some of the biggest challenges for you? Every time when uh, I came in with a, with a um, try to advocate digital, it was like, oh, no. The only smart thing that I have is my phone. You know? <laughs> so, but it's actually what we do every day. We need to embrace it. Uh, like uh, Karamjit mentioned, it's okay if it's slow, but as long as you embrace it. You know, take that, that baby step. For example, get your, your online shopping. Speaking about e-commerce, we see uh, many big giants like Alibaba coming into this region. Amazon uh, very recently as well, so in order not to lose that important market share here. And looking at Malaysian companies, especially SMEs, because they make up close to 99% yep. of the economy, still very big portion. Yep. And we often what we hear about SMEs is that they are not adopting fast enough. Yep. What are the challenges for them? I think the challenges for Malaysian SMEs are the same in the region. In fact, 
uh, Singapore also is worried about its SMEs not adopting fast enough. And their mentality is that if you don't, be, if you don't adopt it and be the disruptor, you're going to be disrupted. Yeah. So it's the same mantra here, uh, except that our SMEs are comfortable still. You know, they're still making money in the traditional way. They are transitioning, but slowly. They don't see anyone of their peers, you know, losing their business or going bankrupt. So their complacency that they still is still business is still going on for them without adopting digital. But because digital will hit you very fast yeah. if you don't adapt, and we need to just get them moving. Like. So the problem with Malaysians is they like a buzzword and they attack it. We talk about sharing economy. Mm. Actually, what's that? Actually, there's four types of economies. Now, there's a sharing economy. There is the personalization economy, there's the replenishment e economy, meaning if your fridge runs out of apples, they, you know, it order apples for you. And then the services. So if you talk about sharing, sharing is literally people don't want to own, they want yeah. to rent. Yeah. So you talk about Airbnb, yeah. Grab, yep. uh, Uber and stuff like that. And then we talk about uh, the services economy, you know, that's why you know, we have lots and lots of uh, startups that does stuff for other people. Because you know, you started in Malaysia, what? we have this concept of runner. So we love that kind of stuff. So you've got plenty of those stuff. But when you talk about SMEs, we've got to make sure that they understand that it's not just the key economy. I yeah. mean, that's a buzzword that's been you over abused. I, I think also to recognize the fact that the idea of a middle man it will be completely disenfranchised soon. So productivity, efficiency is the name of the game. And the, uh, the, the question is, how do you help these businesses who are still rooted in manufacturing 2.0? When we talk about literacy, we talk about being able to read and write. But that's no longer enough today. You need technological literacy. So that's why I think we are not moving fast enough in terms of getting enough of our students going into the science stream. Or, well, well, obviously, you don't need to study engineering to be technologically literate. Um, you look at uh, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, they're, they're not, uh, they, they do not have degrees in engineering, right. but they are technologically literate. Since as long as we end up with uh, a group of people in the society who's technologically literate, when they face a problem in their SME or their, their companies, they will be able to come up with ideas on how to use technology to approach this? Uh, we need to find um, the, the best quick win entry point mm -hmm. because it's very talent. You see, when you mention uh, inclusivity, so um, that doesn't mean uh, whatever applied to the decision maker level and uh, people who stay in the city is the same if I, if I go somewhere in Kuala Langat. Mm -hmm. See, so here is a, a set of people, a population with a certain demographic that has a very um, low digital adoption. But what makes them uh, easier to understand what is digital adoption? For example, I'd be like, okay, now if you want to go find a parking lot, there's an app. Easy. So that is something that they use every day. Uh, you cannot talk to them about programming because they don't do programming every day. Mm -hmm. But they do park their car every day. They shop online every day. So that, and then what's next? I think that the current uh, way of studying is based, uh, is a relic that is based on Industrial Revolution 1 and 2.0. Mm -hmm. We still do the same way of teaching where the world is changing every day. So how we need to really rethink of how we teach our young today. And it's very different from, I think, of traditional All way right. of teaching today. Hang on to that point, because that's what we're going to discuss in the next segment. But for now, we'll go for a short commercial break. We'll be back shortly. Stay with us.